Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Once again, I am Meredith Morakovitz alongside Christy Ackert. Hold on, let's get the whole name. In. Oh, there we go. That's <laughs> it right there. She is the Yankees beat writer for the New York Daily News. And you are an interesting person <laughs> in that you've covered both the Yankees and the Mets. So is there any, with everything that's going on with the Mets, which all very Mets-like, uh, any any part of you that wishes you were in Port St. Lucie instead of Tampa for today? Um, no, but there are times that I kind of watch from afar going, oh, that would have been an interesting day. <laughs> there are many interesting days on the Mets beat. I don't see them ending, um, but there's interesting days here too. But I, I keep an eye on what goes on over there just because who doesn't? Was there one story since coming over that you were definitely, oh, I wish I could have been in on that? I think I think probably, um, well, the sale of the team has been interesting. That has indeed been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and in a way, I went over to the owners meeting and was kind of involved in it, so I have a little taste of it. But I think it's going to be interesting going forward. So it'll be interesting, to see, obviously, to see what happens, and I'll kind of be curious to see how that shakes out. I mean, their fans are dying for new ownership, and their faithful fans kind of deserve it. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see if they get it. Have you enjoyed, now before I even ask the question, <laughs> this is the circle of trust right here. Ah, there are probably okay. seven people watching, so. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, all seven of you. Thank, you. Thank um, you. Have you enjoyed your time covering the Yankees? Yeah, it's been very fun. It, you know, it was, um, it was kind of a crazy year last year. Um, my time with the Mets prepared me for all the injuries that yeah. were there. I mean, I, w I have probably seen every single one of those in my time with the Mets, so that was good. Um, yeah, it's fun. I really like this area for spring training. It's, you know, a great area. Um, and the people have been really good, so I've enjoyed it. Do you have trouble knowing how nice it is and the beach is right here? <laughs> I mean, we all have jobs and we have to do our jobs, but aren't there some days, because some days oh. I'm like, yes, I have one of the best jobs in the world, but also all I want to do is walk to the beach right now and just chill. Well, I had to put a moratorium on my boyfriend sending me pictures from the beach that he was at today. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, th that's a little bit harder over here because in Port St. Lucie, you do not see a beach pretty much for six weeks. Here you can kind of drive by the water and see mm -hmm. it, and I, yeah, I miss the beach, but you know, I have a job to do. So I've only been to Port St. Lucie once, <laughs> and I was in and out. I didn't do a lot of exploring. From what I understand, there isn't a ton of exploring to do, but mm -mm. what's the hot spot in Port St. Lucie? Is there such a thing as a hot spot? Well, Carabas next to the Residence Inn, which where all the writers stay, mm -hmm. is usually hopping. Um, Reservation until, only? Yeah, until like 9 o'clock. You won't be able to get in on Valentine's Day, I'm warning you. Um, there's not really a hot spot. I heard that they're opening a Chick-fil-A, which was big news. Oh, very exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. But of course, no Chick-fil-A on Sunday. So for those no. of you going to Port St. Lucie and are planning on going to that Sunday game, you will not be able to drive through thereafter if it ever opens. As far as the Yankees are concerned, as we know, pitchers and catchers reported today. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed, but there was a guy there by the name of Garrett Cole who happened to throw his first bullpen. And everyone watched. Mm -hmm. um, Boone, Aaron Boone came out, Phil Nevin came out, Mike Harkey came out, um, other pitchers came out. Luis Severino walked by us. He's like, hey, is there somebody famous in there? I'm like, <laughs> Garrett Cole. We got to watch him throw 25 pitches. Um, he didn't speak to the media today. He's supposed to speak tomorrow. Um, you know, from throwing fastballs and changeups, he looked good. You know what? And that brings us to our first programming note here. Garrett yeah. Cole, press conference tomorrow. You can catch that on the Yes Network. We don't have an exact time yet, but it will be in the early afternoon if I were taking an educated guess. And you can follow Jack Curry and I uh, this whole spring training. So check YesNetwork.com, their Twitter, their Facebook, their Instagram. I don't think we've done any TikTok videos yet, <laughs> but maybe maybe that's next. I don't know. So check us out on Yes. Um, as far as Gary Sanchez is concerned, did you find it interesting that he caught him today? Yeah, first, I mean, he, he made a point of being out there. He watched him warm up with another catcher, and then he caught the bullpen. So I think, you know, that's a good sign. That's, you know, showing that he's interested in learning the new pitcher and, and getting out there and get going. So that was good. What did you make of him saying that he's made some adjustments, that the Yankees have wanted him to make some adjustments behind the plate with that right knee being able to maybe frame and get to low pitches a bit better? 
Oh, I think that's important. I think last year the Yankees were disappointed with, you know, his catching. Um, even though statistically he looked better, mm -hmm. um, they were a little disappointed in his ability to frame, um, which is why we saw them hire Tanner Swanson and why we've seen so many changes in, in the staff. So I think it's going to be hard for him. He admitted it's going to be hard. He's been doing it one way for so long. So we'll see how that takes been doing it in a week he said he certainly <laughs> feels better day uh, th today that he did day one of the process of trying to do something new and Aaron Boone was actually asked point blank during the press conference which you can find on yesnetwork.com shameless plug <laughs> um, about his ceiling about how much room he thought there was for additional growth when it came to Gary Sanchez and Boone responded I still believe there's a lot of meat left on the bone do well, you he, believe that as well he is a young catcher really mm -hmm. I mean you know he's been doing it for a long time but he's still what in his third year in the big league 17 was essentially yeah. his first full so he's still learning and the other thing that we have to keep keep in mind is the catching position has changed in that time because of analytics, because of um, you know what they expect, and it's probably going to change again when they get robo umpires too. So he's had to adjust a lot. I think we're going to see. I think we're going to see a difference when he focuses on something. He tends to do well with it because he does work hard so we'll see he really does and I think not everyone realizes that he is a guy that wants it he is a guy that wants to improve and he wants to certainly uh, be the best teammate he can be and best player he can be and he had a funny line today in the clubhouse a great line real real <laughs> shocking the Astros in the 2017 <laughs> cheating came up it's the first time we're getting to see a lot of the Yankees players that have not commented yet on everything that was going on with the cheating and Gary said something, I don't have the exact quote, <laughs> but he was asked about Altuve hitting the home run off of Araldis Chapman game six of the ALCS last year. And it looked through a bunch of videos that he was kind of trying to keep his shirt on, cover something up. Right. A lot of rumors about buzzers and everything else. And Sanchez pretty much said, hey, if I hit a home run <laughs> to send my team to the World Series, you can take everything off. Yep. You can take my pants off. You can yep. take whatever you want off. Yeah. I mean, he said without saying it that, you know, there's a very good chance that he believes there was a buzz around there or something. Yeah. I mean, he said it in a funny way. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of today and I think a lot of this week and maybe next week when the position players come is going to be about how they felt about the Astros. And let's not forget, we're still waiting to hear about the Red Sox in 2018 as well. No doubt about it. And... Um Luis Severino spoke in the clubhouse today. He was obviously asked about it, and you could tell that he was tormented by it. He oh, said, yeah. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've been looking in the mirror during that series, asking myself what I'm doing wrong. Am I tipping my pitches, looking at video, hours and hours in the video room, not being able to find an answer out to only two years later find out that perhaps they're wasn't an answer that something outside of his control clearly was happening and he said all the work he put in yeah you know I mean he really was bothered by it there and you know we don't know this yet because MLB hasn't come out with the Red Sox investigation mm -hmm. but there's that video of them laughing at him in the dugout tip you know calling the pitches as before he would throw them so you know he put a lot of work into that he took that very personally mm -hmm. after 2018 so I mean there are a lot of players that are torn they understand that those guys are their brethren they are their you know union member brothers uh, they do feel cheated I think I do think a lot of them feel that they they were cheated out yeah. of something yeah and, and I think you obviously the Astros and the Red Sox played multiple teams but the Yankees certainly were right in the middle of it for the last two seasons uh, anything else today that stood out to you um, I think it was interesting what Aaron Boone talked about his relationship with Alex Cora and AJ Hinch. I mean, he was close to both of them, but it doesn't sound like he's been overly close to them this off season or not ready to go there yet. Um, you know, it was interesting to hear Louis, Louis Severino. It was interesting to watch him walk by the bullpen when last year we were all waiting for his first bullpen yeah. and he just kind of went about his business, him and Masa um, Tanaka without, you know, the hype. Everybody was taking video and pictures of Garrett Cole, so um, it was interesting. The other thing that was interesting to me, I did not realize this. I know that the new Yankee uniforms are going to have the Nike swoop. Yes. I didn't realize it was going to be on the pants, too. Oh. 
I yeah, didn't notice that today. I saw that today and I was like, huh. ooh, they're getting two logos, one right above the back pocket on the pants. I imagine those logos were quite costly. Oh, I the bet folks they were. At Nike. It does look a little strange, though, doesn't it? Looks it looks so weird. It looks so it just strange to looks me. It looks Photoshopped. I'm sure we'll get used to it. Maybe. Like anything else. Yeah, you never know. Uh, I think now is as good a time as any to uh, give a shout out to our girl, Susan Waldman. Thank you for the mugs. Very nice of you. We'll keep you guessing keep what's you, in here. Keep you guessing. Uh, Suze was all over MLB Network today. As she should be. Making, making the rounds. And I think her and John get down here in about a week or so. They'll be and here for the first game. Looking forward to that. Now, do you think that we can convince her to go on the pirate ship in Clearwater? Oh, I hope so. I'd like to go and see that. Yeah. yeah. And I've always wanted to go on it because they fire a cannon, too. They do fire a cannon. And you don't have to dress up. But if we were going to take that step, oh, yes. do we dress up? Oh, yeah. If you can, yes, definitely. I want to hear from you guys. Susan dressing up for a pirate ship, yes. Yeah, or nay. Like, subscribe, do whatever it is people do when they're watching the internet. Uh, I do want to say thank you to a couple people. Oh, were you nervous? Hulk was the first show. Did you think you were going to be able to follow up that, that masterpiece? I was nervous it would be canceled, but <laughs> no. um, I'm trying to live up to hope, so. Uh, well, it's funny, you know, somebody did comment, Aunt Tony Moe's, <laughs> I think that's what that's, I don't know. Um, LOL, he looked like Jeter for a second. Have you ever mistaken Hoke for Derek Jeter? No. No, that's one I've never seen before, but I'm sure he's going to enjoy that comparison. He did say it would probably be a much better show if Derek <laughs> Jeter were on it, but I had a really great time with Brian Hoke. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully he'll come back. Hopefully he hasn't been scarred for life from the experience. Oh, I'm sure um, he'll come back. Alex God too. where do you get an MM bobblehead? Great question. I don't know. Somebody sent it to me, so I don't know where you would get one, and I'm not sure why you would want one. <laughs> Oh, this is a friend of ours, Mark Feinsand. Ah, Sandy. This makes me miss spring training. Oh, come on, really? Do you know? <laughs> you could have been out know. on that sidewalk. You're in the confines of your nice, warm home. And that's it for the comments for now. But we thank you all for commenting and watching and doing all of that jazz. Now, do you have any non-baseball plans while you're down here in Florida? Um. Well, I did some baseball, or I did some non-baseball stuff before Ooh. spring training started. Like I did a dolphin cruise, which was very nice. A oh. dolphin sunset cruise out of Dunedin, very lovely. lovely. Lots of restaurants I get to try around here, which is fun. I did Frenchies the other night. Um, so I'm gonna go to the beach whenever I get a chance because I'm a big fan of Honeymoon Island. So that's a good move. I'm really hoping that we get a few days where we can at least catch the last bit of sun. Fingers crossed, but even though they're starting earlier than perhaps they have in years past, I feel like they're just going to be more meetings and we're going to be there even later. Do you get that distinct feeling? I have a feeling it's going to be long days. And spring training is always long Generally days. Is. I'm not complaining not about complaining it. Not complaining at all. It's better than having to sit inside 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Um, Okay, so nothing, so I can't convince you to take the ferry to Key West on an off day. <laughs> um, Nobody will do this. Well, you know what? There's a two off days this year. There's a possibility I might do it on the second one. Okay, we will, we will be in touch on that. Did you know that um, Valentine's Day is right around the corner? I did. I have a date for Friday night. How excited. I know, I'm very what, excited. What kind of plans? Um, Pete Caldera is going to come over to my house, and my boyfriend and I are going to make him dinner. Wait, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> That is not what I was expecting. <laughs> Let me dial that back a little bit. If he, if you told me, okay, so Pete Caldera, he uh, is a beat writer by day, Sinatra singer by night. Yes. He's quite good. He performs at the Carnegie Club. And maybe Club he'll sing for us In Friday. New York City. Also, uh, what is it, Swing 46 or uh, place 40, in New York? Yeah, I'm not sure which one it is. Somewhere in the 40s. Um, but he does a great job. He has a great, website. Great job. Has a website. I would have been on board had you said, hey, he's coming over to sing for us <laughs> while we eat an Italian feast, but that doesn't sound like that's what's going on. No, Pete and my boyfriend have been friends for a long time, so he's gonna be our Valentine date. Now, I know you are very close with the owner of Foley's in New York City, Sean Clancy. And he's hopefully making me dinner right now. <laughs> now, 
What do you have to do to get your own burger at Foley's? Oh, we can arrange that for you. Yeah? Yeah, I can, I can talk to someone about that. Are there requirements as far as how many ingredients or what? You have to pick something that goes inside the burger and you have to have like a theme, but I'm sure you could do this. All right, we need to work on that. When's a good time to tell you that I don't eat red meat? Is this gonna be a hindrance but in making a burger? 